Friday. Thank you so much for joining us on a beautiful morning here from Pier 17 in New York City. I'm Ryan Smith in for Greeny, and we have got a jam-packed show for you today. And take a look who we've got with us to break it all down. We got Graz, Jeff Saturday, Bart Scott, chopping at the bit, waiting to talk some football. The gang is all here, so let's go. But first, I want to start you out in the NBA because what a game it was last night. The Lakers, man, they are on the ropes. Let's go to the highlight. Anthony Davis and the Lakers taking on the Clippers. And I'll tell you, Anthony Davis, the injury bug started early, just over three minutes in the, into the game. Davis misses that jumper, and then watch him. Falls to the court. Trips over the video board right there. Now you watch it again. Shoots the air ball three right there, but then trips, falls, doesn't see the board. He finished two of nine in the first quarter in the first nine minutes. Didn't return for the rest of the game. Lakers called it back spasm. Just over two minutes left in the half. Clippers up by 21. Paul George nailing it right there for the corner three. Palmer fired up. George had 24. And then under four minutes left in the third. Kawhi dominating, coming up with that loose ball. He had 15. Clippers blow out the Lakers, 118-94. Here's AD after the game. I know the, the spirit in the locker room is still high. I mean, guys came in after the game and said, put it behind us. We got down the ball. Um, so guys are still great with their minds and their spirit about you know the rest of the season and, and you know from obviously the Friday for playoffs quiet and tomorrow's probably the biggest game um back to the East game. So uh, you know guys are still optimistic and we still we're still fighting. Um and guys spirits are still high. Okay, so the spirits are high, but are this team's playoff hopes? Starting tonight on ESPN against Portland, the Lakers have six games remaining on their schedule. They're favored in four of those six contests, but they only have a 56% chance to earn a top six spot in order to avoid the play-in tournament. Jay Will's with us now to talk about Laker troubles. Okay, so Jay Will, LeBron is banged up. Now mm -hmm. Anthony Davis is banged up. On a scale of 1 to 10, in terms of really contending to win the championship, are you worried about the Lakers? Ten. Whew. It's ten. And that's, that's, that's the reality of where we are. Truncated season. People thought LeBron James was going to load manage. Hasn't load managed. Now dealing with the high an ankle sprain. That doesn't go away, man. You deal with that for the rest of the season. That only heals in the offseason after having multiple months to go to therapy for that. AD banged up. How is he going to handle? By the way, he still had that Achilles injury he came back with. Dennis Schroeder out for 10 to 14 days. 10 to 14 days for a guy that is probably your third leading scorer on this team. So, yes, you're worried about them. A big-time game tonight against the Portland Trailblazers. They could be in that play-in scenario. They will be in that play-in scenario. And your first round, you're telling me you have to go against the Utah Jazz or the Phoenix Suns. I know those teams don't want to see the Lakers, but those teams at full health going against the injury-prone Lakers, they're going to smell blood in the water, mm. and they're going to have home court advantage. Now, if I told you both LeBron and AD would be close to 100%, what would that mean come playoff time? Would they still be your favorite to come out of the West? Yes. If you're telling me that LeBron is turning at 80% mm -hmm. and AD at 90%, they would still be my favorite. Because at the end of the day, LeBron James is the maestro that makes everything happen. He unlocks everybody on this team. We talk about greatness. Last year, he used the hashtag Wash King to stay motivated. He's been out. Look, he's been out for a month. He needs to be out. He needs to rest. But him coming back on an ankle sprain, high ankle sprain, if he's able to go through the Western Conference and then say he meets the Brooklyn Nets mm -hmm. in the World Championship. If he were to go through the Western Conference, then Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irvin, like that catapults him into a different conversation. It does. He would have gone through the Golden State Warriors and the Brooklyn Nets. I don't think any other player in the history of the game have gone through that loaded of teams. And to win in a situation like that with what you're talking Trump about, season? possibly with that ankle sprain lingering into the playoffs, we'll see. Okay, so given LeBron's age, all the wear and tear that he's been through, how worried are you at him getting another crack at the championship? I'm always worried about LeBron James, but I'm not betting against him. I've said this before. Look, people can say whatever they want to say about me and LeBron James because I've made statements about, you know, back in the day comparing him a little bit to Scottie Pippen just mentality-wise before he became more Michael Jordan, right. a leader, right? Even if it was like, hey, Michael Jordan would never say things like, I'll never be 100% in my career. That's fine. You can come at me with all that. <laughs> I'm not betting against this dude. This dude is unique. He is one of one. He is different. If there's anybody that can come back off a high ankle sprain and play through a truncated season and still win a world championship, 
it is number 23. And that's not MJ, that's LeBron James. Wow. He's built for it. I got to tell you, let's put it in context, by the way. The stakes high for this game against the Blazers. If they lose that game, the world champs would, at this moment, mm. end up in the play-in tournament. Imagine that. Jay Will. Score, 118 to 94. The Lakers fall to 37 and 29. Paul George with 24, Kawhi 15, Avica Zubats 14. Kyle Kuzma leads the way with 25. Anthony Davis played just nine minutes before suffering that injury. He's speaking with Mike in the media. Good. Anthony, we saw what looks like a, an ankle tweak early in the game, and then you stayed in for another five minutes, so we got the diagnosis as back spasms. Just uh, wondered if you could take us through what happened and how you feel now. Yeah, the ankle was fine. Um, tweaking, but it, it wasn't bothering me. Uh, the back locked up pretty bad, so uh, that's, that's it. Um, feel a little better now and see how it is tomorrow. So test it out when you wake up and you kind of determine your status for the Portland game tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, um, I should be good to go um, tomorrow based on how it's feeling now. But, yeah, I mean, still wake up and test it out. But my plan is to let's see what's tomorrow. Uh, Anthony, probably tough to take too much from this game considering you left. Uh, obviously, no LeBron, no Dennis, uh, no THT. What? what where would you put the state of the team right now as you guys are still fighting through all these injuries at this point of the season? Um, I didn't work on, so I didn't really see much of the second half. Um, but I think, uh, I mean, I know the, the spirit in the locker room is still high. I mean, guys came in after the game and said, put it behind us. We got down with the ball. Um, so guys are still uh, great with their minds and their spirit about, you know, the rest of the season and, and you know, for obviously we're fighting for playoffs play and tomorrow's probably the biggest game. Um, after the East game. So you uh, know guys are still optimistic and we're still we're still fighting. Um, and God's spirits are still high. Okay, Dave McMenamin, please. A D considering you just called tomorrow's game the biggest game, will that factor into your decision making? as you evaluate the back tomorrow, even if it, it doesn't maybe feel 100%, would, would you feel compelled uh, because of the circumstances of the game to give it a go? Uh, yeah, I mean, we do have a day off the next day. Um, so I'm still, not still going to get work done there, but um, that's for sure, I think. Um, add a little juice to, to the plan tomorrow. Okay, Dan Wilkie, please. Yeah, on the play that um, in the at the very beginning when you when you it, it seemed like you kind of like hit the scorers table. Is that is that what happened on that play? And like your foot kind of went out from underneath you. And and then was there a play or anything that that kind of caused the back to lock up? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I said it before the game. So I said that the scorers table looked like it was really close to the court. Um, and then you know I end up stepping on the scores table and kind of tweak the ankle a little bit, but the ankle is fine. I have no problem with the ankle. I kind of caught it before it turned all the way. I know it kind of looked bad, but it's it's, it's fine. Um, and there was no certain play. Um, you know, during the time I was the first time out, the second time I kind of just, you know, felt it, you know, locking up more and more and more. Um, and then eventually, you know, when I came out, I think uh, around the three minute mark in the first quarter, um, Got to the point where it was, it was pretty tough. So, um, like I say, it feels better now. I've got some work done and be able to, should be able to uh, post more. Okay, Kyle Goon, please. Hey, D. This season has had so many moments where you guys have some kind of setback when it seems like you're getting your ducks in a row. And maybe this game is, is one of those with your back locking up. Um, how do you keep all those those setbacks from adding up in your mind and feeling like it's just insurmountable? Um, just keep fighting. I mean, we know, you know when we're all healthy, the type of team that we have, um, we, we've seen it early in the year, and that's what we all revert back right to. Like, when, we, when we're 100% healthy, you know, we're one of the, you know, we're, we are the top team in the league, and so uh, we keep that in our minds. And so we know that you know, we got a lot of things going on with uh, some of our players, and uh, and guys know that. But we know when we get 100 percent healthy, you know, Brian maybe has a week, Dennis uh, five, six days left or something. You know, but when we 
you get everyone healthy, especially heading into the playoffs. Um, we know the type of team that we are, and I think the league knows the type of team that we are. So, um, you know, no matter if we got to play in a playing game or, you know, we get um, you know, fifth or sixth seed, we, we, we ready to compete against anybody. Um, but our main focus, we have to, we have to get 100% of them. Okay, last two questions. Bill Orm, please. Hey, D, I was going to ask you about that play in. How do you view that 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 possibility? You guys to stay out of it. The what play? Oh, the sorry, play the, the play, play the play in round. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Um, I mean, we don't look at it as something bad. Um, you we need we need a lot of games. We need games to get back accustomed to each other anyway. So, I mean, if it happens that way, it happens that way. Um, you know, obviously, we don't want to go that route, but if it happens, it happens. And we're going to win games in the play in and then get ready for what we play. Um, you know, first round and, and take care of business from there. So, um, you know, look at it. You know, we look at it as game reps and the play in. And if not, then we got, you know, a little bit more practice time to get accustomed to each other. So, either way, um, we're fine either way. Uh, but, uh, like I said, we know the type of team that we are. Last question, Mike Trudell. Hey, Anthony, you, of course, weren't on the court for very long tonight, but just wondering, without LeBron, Schroeder, and THT, uh, what, what do you think is, is it going to be a key tomorrow, uh, given what the lineup is and kind of that lack of playmaking? How can you guys try to continue to get good shots? Uh, our defense. Um, I got to go back to the tape for tonight. Um, seeing that I missed most of the game and didn't really uh, see some of it. Um, but I think our defense, you know, we defend and rebound and, uh, we're going to get shots, and even if we're not making shots, we're still able to, you know, defend and hold teams um, you know, below their average. So we got to continue to defend. You know, being that, um, you know, that defensive team that is very tenacious and scrappy, um, and play desperate like we did against Denver. And if we do that, you know, start tomorrow night um, for the rest of the next amount of games that we have, uh, we'll find ourselves in a good position heading to the playoffs. All right, thanks so much, Anthony. Last question, Mike Trudell. Hey, Anthony, you, of course, weren't on the court for very long tonight, but just wondering, without LeBron, Schroeder, and THT, uh, what, what do you think is, is it going to be a key tomorrow, uh, given what the lineup is and kind of that lack of playmaking? How can you guys try to continue to get good shots? Uh, our defense. Um, I got to go back to the tape for tonight. Um, seeing that I missed most of the game and didn't really uh, see some of it. Um, but I think our defense, you know, we defend and rebound and uh, we're going to get shots. And even if we're not making shots, we're still able to, you know, defend and hold teams um, you know, below their average. So we got to continue to defend, you know, being that, um, you know, that defensive team that is very tenacious and scrappy um, and play desperate like we did against Denver. And if we do that, you know, start tomorrow night um, for the rest of the next amount of games that we have, uh, we'll find ourselves in a good position heading to the playoffs.